Welcome back to the lab, folks. So what we're going to look at today is a capacitive dropper. Now, I have been uh, thinking about working with these for a while. I've known about them for a long time, but, you know, never really thought of any use for them. But I thought, I, you know, it's about time I better have a look at them. Um, they are attractive for a number of reasons. Their simplicity, it's just a capacitor to load. And the capacitor is really cheap. I think these the capacitor I'm using here costs me pennies. So they're very attractive in that respect. Uh, you know, and as provided you don't require a lot of power, they're you know very applicable. So in this case here, we're basically just going to make a power supply to light up some LEDs. And the circuit here is quite simple. So we have I've got green LEDs in there, and I got them in series, and I got them both going both ways so that we'll get light on both halves of the wave. And the ones going this way will protect the ones going this way and vice versa when the wave goes back and forth. So the VD here should never be any more than three times the voltage drop across an LED. And we have a resistor here. The only reason I'm putting this resistor here is to limit inrush current. So it doesn't have to be a big resistor. In my case, it's three 2K ohm resistors in parallel, giving us a total of 667 ohms. And then the capacitor. Now, I want uh, a, a total of 20 milliamps going through this circuit here. So uh, we're, going to, we're going to do the math and figure out what size of capacitor we need for that. We're deciding on the current. We're going to go with 20 milliamps. And um, we're going to use this formula here so that the reactance of C1 plus R1 is going to be equal to the voltage going in minus the volts across the LEDs divided by the current. And in our case, that's 117 volts AC and I measured the voltage across the diodes at 7.5. So we divide that by 0 0.02, which is the 20 milliamps, and we get uh, 500 and 5,475 ohms of, of real and reactant uh, impedance there. And, and another nice thing about these things is, is that all the voltage drop is, is across the reactants. So there's, there's no power dissipation, right? The only power dissipation would be in the equivalent series resistance or equivalent parallel resistance inside the capacitor, which is very, very, very small. So very little power dissipation in these things as well. So now R1, okay, is 667. So the reactants are capacitor is going to be 5,475 minus 667 or 4,808. Now the capacitor is going to be one divided by two times pi times the frequency times the reactance. So for us, our C1 is going to be two times pi times 60, which is our frequency, times our reactance, which is 4,808 ohms. And that gives us approximately 552 nanofarads or 0.552 microfarads. So I'm going to use a 0.47 microfarad capacitor and it's rated at 250 volts. And really it should be a type X capacitor for this, but uh, I don't have one of that size. So I'm just going to playing around with this. I'm just going to leave that. And this resistor should also be one of those fused wire wound resistors, just in case everything shorts out. But the uh, chances of that actually happening are pretty minimal. I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is about as far as I'll go building circuits up on breadboards. If it's anything more complex than this, I'll just get a PC board made up. It makes life a heck of a lot easier. Okay. So now we're going to turn it on. I'm going to measure the current through it see if our calculations are roughly correct and it looks like we're getting 21 milliamps thereabouts that should be fine but uh, yeah it's a slightly higher current than i was expecting but it's right in around what i want i want 20 milliamps so that's that's fine but i would have expected a little bit less with 470 nanofarads in there now what am i going to do with this okay i mean that i just want to i've got one of these things here let me show you I got one of these old wall wart cases from a, a, a really cheap, nasty wall wart. So I'm actually going to build this thing into this case. Now, so the first thing I'm going to have to do here, let's turn that off. First thing I'm going to have to do here is, is drill some holes. So I'm going to drill holes to the LEDs right here and here. Then I'm going to kind of stick the LEDs in t into it and use that as a guide to solder them up in the arrangement that we saw in the schematic there. And then I'm going to connect everything up. I'll put the LEDs in this way, and then I'll hot glue everything in place. And we'll just strap this back together. And we should have a little plug-in light. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. I'm not sure how it'll turn out, but it's just it's just for fun. I mean, it's just, it's just a case of me wanting to play around with capacitive droppers and 
I'm just going to do this little fun thing here. There's no real application for it. I was thinking that I have um, my, actually my wife runs a, a bed and breakfast and we have to try and figure out where all the breakers are going in, in the place. I have no idea. It's not marked in the, in the breaker box. I'm going to use this for that. I'm going to, you know, I'll plug it into a, a wall and go and turn the breaker on and off and see if that affects that particular socket. And that way I'll be able to map out the breakers and you know, I could do it with something uh, that I already have, but I'll, that's what I'll use this for, just as, so I have a purpose for it. Okay, let me go uh, drill the holes for the LEDs. All right, this is what I did. I got this one little, this hole here, kind of out of line with this one. I've got, uh, uh, on my drill press, I've got a little platform that you can move things in X, Y, but it's got a little slop, and I forgot about the slop, and the uh, that's the result. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is going to stick the LEDs into it like this, just a little bit in there, and then I'm going to wire it up, and then I should I'll I'll leave enough lead length there so that I can finagle it to get it into there. I was hoping to have it a little bit tighter, but such is life. And uh, then we'll stuff it in there and uh, start wiring things up. Okay, let me get that onto the soldering bench, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got it all wired up here. And now all I have to do is uh, stuff all those LEDs into those holes. Though, I don't know if I should try to do this on camera or not. I don't know if it's going to go that well. But, uh, yeah, let's see what we can come up with here. Yeah, I need something to poke them in there with. A little screwdriver should help. Okay, well there, they're sticking out. And I'm just going to put this under a magnifying glass to make sure none of these leads are shorting. You know, they all have tons of space. So now what I'm just going to do is I'm going to make sure that we get enough hot snot in there to hold everything in place. And let me get my snot gun out. So let's get some hot snot in here and uh, package it up. It's a strange job. It's just a can't go too fast with these because uh, the, it can't heat up the glue stick quickly enough. Okay, I think that's enough. I don't think anything's going to move in there right now. Make sure that pushed up against the side there. Oh yeah, that's good. That's all right. Well, let's get this uh, screwed back together here. Okay, well, there it is. My first uh, capacitive dropper project. Let me get an extension cord and try this out. Okay, plug that in, make sure everything's turned on. And here goes nothing. There we go. It's working. Boy, that's bright. That is very, very, very bright. Whoa, that is, yeah, that's bright. That's, uh, it's gonna light up the room. I'm gonna turn off all the lights, see how well it does that. It could be a night light, nice green night light, just where the eyes are most sensitive. Well, folks, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. But if you do go ahead and do something like this, uh, you know, just be very careful of the 120 volts. I know uh, probably most of us have, have uh, gotten our share of um, little shocks over the years, but uh, it always uh, 
It's always a good idea to be very, very careful when you're dealing with uh, AC. And I knew these little boxes would come in handy. Okay, see you in the next one, guys. Bye.